thank you bagav um, i'll take it on from here to introduce entrepreneurship and innovation iac first and then um, uh, go ahead further to our uh, guest uh, rohan ganapati so speaking about entrepreneurship and uh, innovation iac we are a forum in indian institute of science which focuses on uh, developing entrepreneurial ecosystem and to bring students closer to the startup culture we aspire to achieve these goals by bringing some of the chief players in the, from the entrepreneurial world to conduct talks webinars seminars and pitch events and we also have uh, our startup service cell in which we provide supporting ecosystem for the startups spawning from the student end to take off the runway and we are go going beyond our walls to create uh, investment learning forum and industrial relations forum parallelly to provide uh, impact and support to the student community so if any one of you want to get in touch with us for any interaction or communication you can uh, uh, send us a note on team.ntisc@iac.ac.in which i'll be typing it uh, soon on chat so coming to our uh, coming to talk about our speaker today today we have an uh, we have a speaker on our platform who has created everlasting footprint in the indian space startup ecosystem so rohan ganapati is founder chief executive officer and chief technical officer of india's most promising deep tech startup bellatrix aerospace bellatrix aerospace is a space research and development company incubated in society for innovation and development the deep tech incubator of indian institute of science the company spe specializes in developing in space propulsion systems and uh, orbital launch vehicles with a venture in mind to go all electric in space uh, so rohan is an innovator and uh, aeronautical engineer with specializations in spacecraft propulsion rocket engineering electric propulsion and orbital launch vehicles he has been listed in forbes 30 under 30 india and asia and is one of the principal investigators of india's first microwave induced electromagnetic thrusters despite so many achievements and accolades under his cover he is a philanthropist by heart down to earth but aiming to the stars and beyond so let's deep dive into extravagant journey and insights of rohan ganapati in taking his bellatrix uh, aerospace to uncharted territories in deep tech space startup ecosystem so welcome sir we are very happy to have you on on this platform thank you sudeep thank you for the introduction uh, that was very kind of you and hello to everybody looking forward uh, to interact with you all today so sir can you uh, provide us uh, more insights about uh, bellatrix aerospace and how we where did the basic dream to ach achieve this started from what was your inspiration and what was how did your journey go about building bellatrix okay um so if you can see uh, first i would like to uh, start by telling that uh, we didn't name bellatrix after the harry potter character everybody asks us uh, whether did you name bellatrix after bellatrix lestrange the uh, evil witch in harry potter but no uh, it's one of the star in the constellation orion um it's a very prominent constellation for um, many of you amateur astronomers when you look at the night sky so uh, it's a very interesting uh, i mean area uh, in space as well because there is your orion nebula so it's a very active star forming region so probability of finding earth like planets in a given small region is much higher at the orion nebula than any other um, you know places so we uh, if you ask us where we would want to go say 400 500 years down the line when we have the technology to you know propulsion technology to uh, travel deep into space uh, we would want to go to the area surrounding bellatrix so that was the philosophy behind the naming the company as bellatrix and we also being in the area of propulsion uh, but uh, starting a company was completely an accident uh, i wanted to be an academic um, Uh, since childhood born into a family of academics uh, so I, i like to teach 
so uh, i thought i'll build a career in you know teaching um, particularly uh, but all started to change of course when once you are in college uh so i was i i mean since uh, i mean as a kid uh, I, I i was born and brought up in uti so i could call myself closer to the stars than others uh, you know down in the plains um but you see you get to see very dark skies which normally doesn't happen here in bangalore because of light pollution or any other cities so you always wonder it is so huge it is vast and earth is a very small um, uh, piece of that i know magnanimity as i would call so always there was a sense of exploration uh, in me uh, so uh, i joined aer aerospace engineer aeronautical engineering not aerospace so uh, we only learn about um, as, uh, you know things which are under the atmosphere which fly in the atmosphere not in space so this the, uh, what we do at bellatrix is something self thought we as in me and my team uh, uh, so uh, as i said there was always passion for us to do something in space that brought me to uh, take up aeronautical engineering and i was an experimentalist uh, since um, uh, a small kid so i used to i, I like to break things up and see what's inside the curiosity was the main driver so i was uh, i mean i was the neighborhood electrician as you can call if something happens in somebody's house they call me so uh, uh thanks to people like them that you know uh, i understood what engineering really is uh, uh so i had a flair for you know building things uh, since um, um uh, being a kid so uh, while in college uh, i realized after joining the course that i'm not going to be taught anything regarding rockets or uh, uh, satellites or spacecraft as a matter of fact so uh, it's then that you realize okay you're an aeronautical engineer and not anything to do with space so uh, uh true to my uh, you know way of working i started um, uh, i wanted to experiment things so started reading books understanding built a team and what pocket money your parents send team is critical because the more people the more money you can uh, pull in i uh, had to do some uh, stuff which you want to do so we were we used to launch rockets out of coimbatore uh, so called amateur uh, modeling model rockets uh, but re really powerful ones so when we start, so we started doing this while i was in my first year of engineering so uh, that's when we uh, i mean you practically learn what is center of pressure what is cg basically and why fins are needed in a rocket to you know stabilize its trajectory what is spin stabilization things like this and uh, even coming to propellant uh, what is the what is oxygen balance what is fuel to oxidizer ratio what is stoichiometry so all these things we kind of learnt it on the go so the goal was launch rockets make rockets which you know go up to 2 3 kilometers and uh, you know recover them uh, this is how we started in the first year um, uh, actually uh, learning the field but uh, there was no idea of belatrix back then right i was 18 years old but uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately while we were mixing the propellant i always wanted to go higher right i wanted to get more specific impulse out of the propellant as we call uh, so you need to go to a different mixture so instead of trying with basic gunpowder we went with potassium nitrate sorbitol then of course the real rocket propellant as we call ammonium perchlorate and aluminium so uh while mixing it you need to kind of mix it because this powder becomes a slurry a paste when heated at around 100 or 120 degree celsius so uh, uh college didn't allow us to do anything like this because everything was done illegally as i would call uh um so i was a hostel student so there was a day scholar friend um, i mean they had this convection microwave right where you can set the temperature Uh, something in lab which they don't allow you to do so i uh, take ammonium perchlorate and um, uh, goes there with htp i mean the rubber binder htpb we go there use the convection micro oven to basically uh, make your propellant grain into a paste and uh, you start pouring them into mold the final mold caught fire uh, my hand uh, was uh, completely destroyed my right hand had to undergo plastic surgery for that my chest the house was on fire and my uh, friend's grandmother was stuck inside 
So all the other people come, they uh, switch off the electricity, they pour water, they drag us all out. So this was an experience I I'm sharing with you all because this is something which brought us closer to the subject because it is not something which you can take easily. Uh, safety and um, understanding engineering is so critical. So it brings your ego down and um, you know it teaches you that life is hard. Uh, so uh, then I decided I'm not doing anything practical until uh, we get hold of the basics, the mathematics uh, in particular. So, uh, uh, I mean, at that age when we want to, would like to, you know, take your bikes, roam, uh, I mean, go to parties, uh, that was a hard realization for me that, uh, I mean, study more math, understand what goes into rockets. Um, uh, so, fortunately, formed a small team around myself. And uh, then we had an opportunity to go to NASA Goddard, where they were building the James Webb Space Telescope. So this was in 2011, 2011. Um, uh, I was just entering my third semester. So I always had this fascination of using water as a propellant, right? Because water is available on the moon, on the polar ice caps, on Mars, on Jupiter's moon, Europa, as well as Saturn's moon, Enceladus. So what would enable your deep solar system travel and what is limiting? What is limiting is your propellant, ability to carry propellant for your journey to go and come back. So always wanted to do something with this. And of course, with water, what would you think? Uh, it's electrolysis, right? Uh, I can split hydrogen and oxygen. I can store that gas and then use it as propellant. But again, that's very inefficient because it's chemical energy. I'm just taking uh, the energy content with, uh, uh, which is present inside those uh, carbon, I mean, those um, uh, uh, hydrogen and oxygen bonds. Uh, but what we wanted to do was use electric propulsion, meaning add energy to it. In electric, you don't use the energy content of the atom, rather you add energy to it. Uh, uh, which uh, you know, uh, acts, uh, which expands more, gives you a better exhaust velocity. So that's what we wanted to do, and that took us uh, to um, NASA Goddard, where um, had the good fortune of meeting Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, uh, your childhood heroes. Um, but uh, so when you explain your paper concept, it was concept. So it is not a research paper which uh, people like you all write. Uh, in IISC. So as you can Im imagine as an undergrad, you don't know how to write a research paper. So it was called as a concept paper. So, um, but they were uh, very kind enough because they were in the jury to take some special permission to show us the vacuum facilities inside where they really test this ion engines, right? I'm an Indian citizen, we are not allowed to go there. But thanks to them, the, uh, we got the permission they took us. I actually literally saw uh, James Webb being assembled back then, the mirror segments. Then we go to the um, propulsion area where there are huge vacuum chambers. So this was an eye opener for me that uh, it's not a joke and uh, it is something, uh, you know, it's not to be taken lightly. So I come with a thought process that Jaldi se jaldi, B.Tech katam karo, complete your B.Tech and uh, apply to Princeton. Because in U.S., that's one of the universities, very few, which is doing a lot of work on plasma physics and electric propulsion, right? Um, but what is required to go there? So it's not just your GRE score. Can something set you apart? I didn't want to do my master's. I wanted to do a direct PhD. So I be befriended a professor there. Uh, who said that, of course, if you have a patent, I can always recommend, right? So uh, that made, made us actually, you know, come back and think, let us do something. So I didn't know Elon Musk existed until then, uh, 2012. Of course, now he's a rage, uh, all these things are happening. But in India, sadly, space as a private industry was completely unheard of, 2012, 10 years back, right? <laughs> I feel so old now. But... Um, uh, yeah, that was the time back then. So when we, as soon as we came back to India, uh, I thought what is required to make an engine which runs on water as a propellant? The idea is to apply for patent, uh, get a global patent, mainly in the US, uh, sanctioned in US uh, and in the Europe so that um, uh, it, uh, you know, it benefits your CV, your resume. So uh, uh, we sat 
uh, thought about and looked at all the potential problem statements uh, concerning electric propulsion and thought what is that we can do we realized that yes we can ionize water and make a propulsion system and i would require 20 lakh rupees we arrived at a figure of around 20 lakh rupees to do that um, so we go in and around coimbatore uh, that's where i did my undergrad uh, 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 talking to hnis there are a lot of high net worth individuals there asking them to fund the project um, and uh, they asked why can't your college fund uh, why can't you apply for grants but i I was very clear by, by the time those things, even if they approve it, by the time it comes, I would have already graduated. So it doesn't make sense. And they were not interested because we didn't have a company. So what is in it for them? Uh, fortunately, I get a surprise call from uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam, uh, the former president of India, that he, uh, he, has, he came across an article where this young boy from Coimbatore meets Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin. So he wanted to understand what it is. It was his curiosity. So I was, uh, so I get a call in the evening, 11 o'clock, Rathko, come to the guest house. Um, uh, Dr. Kalam would like to meet. So I, I was literally, I was just pinching my skin. Is it true? Is, is this really happening? Uh, we go, we meet very uh, humble, down to earth person. He said, uh, uh, he listened carefully what we want to do. But he said, you understand the reality in India, seeing is believing. So you can't go to ISRO directly and propose this. They would ask uh, proof, does it work, whatever you do. So what, what is that you need? And uh, he said, I can't fund the project. I don't have money. So all I can give is a recommendation letter. Right, so that was sufficient. So with that letter, I set out uh, looking for uh, for funds. I spoke to my principal. I said my fifth semester and sixth semester, I will take it in my eighth semester. So when I go to my eighth semester, I, I'll attempt all the exams in one go. Kindly allow me to do. And uh, she, being a great lady, sadly she passed away at the age of forty-five. My principal. Um, uh, great lady she was she said okay normally they don't give such permission so uh jsw group uh jindal steels uh they were uh, kind enough to give us a 20 lakh grant so this was in 2013 and that's when the journey really starts so then we start to see the entire um, global landscape and on uh, to find uh, you know where the problem is where there's a solution and i meet my family friend in mysore uh, Yashas, who's now uh, a partner in the company as well, co-founder. Uh, his interest was clearly into uh, business development, uh, operations, those kind of areas. And I, mine was into technical. So there was a clear synergy that um, yeah, let's do something. And we realized there's tremendous potential uh, because uh, uh, in the propulsion system market globally. And then we uh, see SpaceX and how NASA in the U.S., completely uh, made space into a private industry. So instead of they defining the problem, they themselves uh, you know, coming up with a solution and they themselves being the user. So they transition to doing something as we only define the problem. Rockets and satellites are something which industry can do today. It is not that you require NASA. NASA can do something futuristic. So let us concentrate on future. We are not an industry. We are an R&D organization. So this shift had taken place in the US. And Elon Musk was already successful with his Falcon 1. And Falcon 9 had reached orbit. He had won the uh, NASA uh, commercial crew supplies contract by then. So we thought, yes, this is an industry which is picking up. And then you see Planet Labs, a lot of new space companies coming up, uh, from uh, apart from the legacy players. So this, uh, we thought, we sat and thought, in India, is with ISRO, um, I mean, uh, one of the few, uh, I mean, very few countries with advanced space programs. There's a lot that we can add value to the space industry from India because space is always to be viewed as a global industry. It's not uh, limited to one's boundary or one's country, but it, there's more we can do from India. So that was a thought process when we started. Okay, let's do a company. Now let's really do it. Uh, if it works, it works. If not, we are still young. We can always go and pursue our education. That's all. So next two, three years, we fully invested into developing this. Lot of trial and errors, failures, 
we had uh, we had uh, rented out a shed just outside of a college in an industrial area where uh, uh, in the evening hours we used to go there and work on the thruster like literally uh, weld braze clean sweep and test your propulsion so uh, failures 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 because water is a heavy molecule it's not a mono atomic uh, element like argon um, and it's uh, difficult to ionize when we talk about electric propulsion we say amount of energy which is required to remove one electron from its outer orbit right so uh, both oxygen hydrogen having different energies uh, to sustain it was difficult it was a difficult it was a learning for us as well 2015 a year after i graduated we were su- successful in uh, of course demonstrating the world i would call it the world's first uh, water uh, based electric propulsion system uh, we had applied patent and now we have patent we have, the patent was granted in all the countries uh, i mean it's a pct um, us europe japan so uh, uh, that was the journey 2015 was successful and 2015 february we registered bellatrix as a private limited company so team of four two of my juniors myself and uh, yashas from isro uh, we then came to isro um but of course they didn't believe us of course stroke of luck as you would call uh, cha- the former chairman of isro uh, kiran kumar sir was in mysore uh, my um, co-founder yashas's college as a chief guest so he goes to kiran kumar and shows this uh, um, you know um paper with results that there is something which we have demonstrated and he is like this is what i was looking for so that's how we also ended up becoming the first startup to receive uh, the first order from isro for a technology intake so normally isro doesn't do something called as a spin in it's always spin off they give tech to industry industry develops and isro buy back, buys them back it's called as the buyback so for the first time we see something happening where isro is working with some company that to a very small company giving them an order for something which they need so uh, so we got a 1 crore order from them um, uh, for the uh, in 2015 and that's when uh, uh, he recommended iisc that it's extremely deep tech and uh, uh, they all moved to bangalore and uh, iisc will be a you know good ecosystem to uh, set this thing up so that's how uh, that was that's how we all came from coimbatore to bangalore to iisc in particular and then we uh, 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 set up um, and um, yeah, it's been a good journey so far um, uh, uh, so 2019 we also became the first startup in india to raise a vc focused space investment um, and um, uh, of course deepika padukone also invested uh, and um, uh, now we are in raising the next round to actually go global and we also re- uh, so working with isro we realized how important it is to qualify something for space because nothing can fail there so we talk about six sigma in quality standards say a 1 in 10000 will fail or something but in space nothing can fail so you can imagine the importance on quality and how you do engineering so that's something isro taught us um, and in the meanwhile we expanded now we are a 50 plus uh, team Uh, we uh, we were able to get, get good talent from all big companies honeywell beat honeywell ge shell we are space is basically multidisciplinary and you will be shocked to know that the only the founding team are aerospace engineers rest all are from different departments because um, uh, space requires expertise from different fields um, uh, so now today we have solutions we provide engines we are a propulsion systems company so we provide engines for the smallest of the satellites which we call nano satellites the thrusters again the world smallest as big as your fingernail small fingers fingernail as big as that to as big as 5 ton class of satellites uh, we provide engines uh, and uh, we have set up one of uh, asia's biggest uh, uh space propulsion uh, focused uh, lab in iisc uh where we do enter uh, manuf- design development manufacturing assembly integration and testing so this year we are taking all these thrusters to space so this year is very important for us so this is our go to market year as i would call so five years of development because space gestation period is high unlike a software industry you can't come up with a product in 6 months or 1 year and enter the market 
so uh, uh, this year we are going to market we're going global and um, we are collaborating with global space agencies as well uh, that has been our um, journey um, of course it's too long uh, uh, to talk in this um, uh, discussion and um, uh, all of you at IIC, please feel free uh, if you would like to see these thrusters or engines in action, come to our lab. We'd be happy to show you around. Um, and uh, one more thing, space is a $450 billion global industry, so which is divided into something called as upstream and downstream. We are in the upstream segment. So downstream is an area where people use the data generated from upstream um, and you know uh, use it be it for either agriculture or finance or purposes like this. It's because of space technology we are all connected today. It has made the world a smaller place thanks to satellite. And it is the only industry where the return on investment is much higher than what you invest on a longer perspective. People would say space is expensive, it is, but returns on a longer term are better. And now we are actually becoming a spacefaring civilization and there is more to do from India. And um, I would like to uh, encourage or partner with um, uh, anybody coming with any solution um, where we use you know, space as one of the enablers. So uh, yes, Sudeep, thank you for that. I hope I've not bored you all. No, sir, it was uh, one of the, it was very insightful. And most importantly, we uh, would like to uh, congratulate you on your mission to go global and collaborate with uh, different uh, uh, global agencies uh, which are aiming to take the technology to the space and uh, coming to our uh, next uh, um, interesting question so one of the um, challenges which every deep tech startup fa faces like once we get inside that arena where, where, as a scientist or as an innovator the first time for, for us, it's pretty much like uh, the first and foremost important uh, uh, factor is creating an impact, while the second is the money. But in the world of investors, the first comes the money and the second comes the impact. And one of the biggest challenge here is to find a middle ground to get the best deal for the both. And along with that, once we pursue a deep tech startup, there is obviously um, the trust from the market and trust from the community kind of drastically reduces once they hear the idea and a lot of challenges comes down the way. So what are some of the important challenges which you faced, which you would like to communicate with the student community of IASC and how did you overcome them? It can be in the financial area, it can be in the legal area, it can be it can be anything uh, it's a very good question which you asked and in fact you also mentioned both financial and legal which is very important for people uh, em taking the embarking their journey uh, entrepreneurial journey it's also important for them to wear another hat called legal hat so lawyers wouldn't help you you should uh, you should know uh, legally uh, what is out there coming to your question uh, when you when you're a deep tech company right one thing you should be clear in your mind if you are confident that the product you, which you will be developing you will be okay future tense you will be developing will create an impact there should be no doubt that uh, in your mind uh, either way right if what if they will reject or not because look at indians basically us or anybody so if there is a solution we are early adopters of it we adopt easily but we are very skeptical until it is it has hit the ground. So that is the reality. So please keep this in mind and uh, and this should give you confidence that people will doubt and question the credibility until the product is ready and they can see something in the, with their eyes. But that doesn't uh, that shouldn't stop you from actually uh, developing the product because it's very important for you in your mind to be clear that the product which you are developing or, or you have envisaged will uh, you know um, uh, help a larger spectrum uh, of the you know area in which you intend to solve the problem. So that is very important for an entrepreneur. Passion alone is not sufficient. What we have learned in our journey is perseverance. Uh, be ready to see failures. Um, uh, that should be true for any successful startup or a company. 
from a startup you transition into an msme and from an msme into an industry so please ensure that um, perseverance is the key uh, believe in your product and for you to uh, increase your confidence of believing in your product it is important for you to get associated with an incubator a technology if it's a tech company a technology incubator like many iits have or iisc for example good thing with iisc now is they also open doors to non iisc folks um because it uh, you need the advisory board uh, who will tell because advisors will not question your product they will only tell how to make it better so uh, think around these lines and it is important in india we do not we have something in us you have something called as angels i'm 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 sure you are all seeing the shark tank uh, episode these days which which is in you know um, a good um, uh, craze but uh, uh, but that doesn't work for deep tech companies but uh, for ever anything deep technology um, we do not have a vibrant angel investor network in india we have but they are also risk averse angel by meaning is somebody who takes risk and up to 1 crore rupees they will not think much they would like to take the risk and hand over the check so uh, there are angels in india there's mumbai angel network lot of people so it is little difficult for you to find the right fit so even today uh, thanks to these this government's policies these days that uh, it's easier for you to get grants of up to 1 crore of rupees so karnataka government has something called as elevate and of course from startup india there uh, there are other um, um, events which of course you know uh, gives you that money which is required for you to bring the proof of concept the poc idea to poc stage for an entrepreneur is very important so uh, it was very difficult for us because we had to go from pillar to post uh, but now things have changed uh, because we began to embrace um, uh, the startup culture because we don't say startup as just a um, uh, place to make money it is uh, technically also a place where you can see adoption of technology into a product which is happening much quicker basically it was academia to industry so that uh, which takes time the academic research to come to industry something with startup it's happening faster uh, now time uh, things have changed uh, and once with these grants which doesn't come with any strings attached okay please note this point so it's easy for you to bring it from idea to poc and once you have a poc it's easy for you to find an investor or an angel who will fund it further the risk appetite for the investor is increasing day by day as a, as an as we speak it was not like what it was uh, that is one part of it second part for us the biggest challenge we face was legal we are into something called as propulsion or space which is a big no no in the sense it's dual use it can be used for peaceful purposes i can also make a missile go and you know i mean sorry rocket into a missile so the uh, control algorithm the software which you write you can ask it to put a satellite in orbit or you can ask it to take a parabolic trajectory and you know ballistic trajectory and go and hit your uh, enemy so it's so risky so there there were no governing rules especially from india but 2017 uh, and this this is why uh, people are not willing to uh, invest in bellatrix because there's no legal framework but thanks uh, again uh, government's good initiative 2017 india became a signatory to three major agreements the australia agreement the vasenar pact most important one is mtcr as we call missile technology control regime so in so when you are signatory to this you can now export dual use technologies to friendly countries because india is a signatory so that brought out the legal hurdle and now that uh, india has announced that even here space we will privatize and they have formed in space so to attract investment so these are uh, the legal challenges which we saw take take shape so uh, uh, we were the only two startups in 2015 both out of iisc astrom and velatrix uh, to exist in india two space startups uh, in 2015 uh, 2017 once this legal thing started to take shape and 2019 when velatrix got investment after that 
you see today there are more than 50 56 or 60 startups in the area of space alone so uh, you can see the positive impact which you have created so that was the legal challenge for us so uh, coming uh, to deep tech for others uh, uh, who all want to enter into this area please look at the legal challenges and i'm sure nothing would be as stringent as uh, it was for us being in defense and space and um, uh, uh, please look into both the areas uh, have idea to poc first utilize grants and get yourself incubated get an advisory committee uh, both financial as well as technical and legal and um, uh, look into regulations so it's important for a founder to wear multiple hats even though that's not your specialization because initially you can't afford experts so that would be uh, my sort of advice and that is how um, um, we sailed the boat uh thank you for the explanation sir it was a very good one and of, of course it was very insightful and it or it gave us all uh, it it made us understand how the legal uh, and financial challenges can drop into the development and so most importantly since you got ever since you got incubated in um, society for innovation and development both sid as well as indian institute of science has provided traction as well as supportive ecosystem to the development of uh, your startup uh can you um, throw some light on uh, how and all they supported in pursuing your challenges so that it would definitely encourage uh, some of the members over here to start applying for these uh, areas if they have any ideas to take to the market yes uh, I, in fact uh, thanks for asking that question uh, of course they give you a seed money right initially when they come they also uh, uh, invest a small seed money into your company which would enable you to hire people because without paying salaries nobody would stick initially that part would be taken care for us the major uh, impact was space is something like initially it's like a black hole it's a sinkhole for cash because before you come out of a product you need the facilities so where can you invest in the facilities with something like iisc has which is required for your work no right so uh, all the beautiful facilities which are set up at the nano science um, uh, center the center for nano science and engineering um, and other departments the uh, aerospace everywhere the facilities are something which is not accessible to outside people and you it's not something which you can invest so opening up uh, to the facilities is something which iisc uh, has taken pride in itself it has world class facilities which you all can make use of for to bring your product out and um, scrc for example uh, uh, we are uh, i mean highly simulation driven so you need help from the uh, uh, super computing uh, uh, group here at iisc and you know how expensive these softwares are uh, be it any simulation software it will be difficult for a startup to afford that Uh, enabling that so that was uh, so this is how we see a greater value addition what sid and iisc did to us was allowing us to use their facilities to bring our product main thing another one is uh, of course you have professors uh, and space is an area where you know and what we want to work is multidisciplinary as i said so you have uh, say i i i want to i propellants we work on high high energetic materials propellant so you go to so there is a professor who works on something like that catalysis is a different area so and then you go to packaging nano packaging uh, that's a different area uh, so there are multiple specializations which are which is available in different departments be it power electronics be it motors for example uh so uh this is a big, and since we are we need everything you find these experts also professors who come on board as advisors and uh, you know uh, so that you uh, it helped us to uh, bring the product so uh, more than the seed money which sid gave uh, this uh, the access to facilities and the technical know how which iisc has is what enabled belatrix to be where we are today and going forward as well but it would not be possible if we were these uh, naive boys 
uh, who, if we had not come to Coimbatore, I mean, come down to IAC and you know, uh, started working elsewhere. So, thanks to them. And you you can easily approach. There's a good committee also. And when they don't have experts, they call experts from even outside of ISRO, DRDO, or any other central labs to evaluate your idea. And there's uh, there's also uh, 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 I mean experts from industry in SID who have they're not just academicians. They worked at big uh, corporates who know how how to sell a product. So in terms of uh, that's also important for an entrepreneur, right? How do you sell a product? So uh, all this um, is available at our SID. Uh, which you know helped us at our initial stage. Thanks a lot, sir. And uh, most importantly, uh, when it comes to Society for Innovation and Development, uh, both uh, Professor Gurumurthy and uh, Rajwagre uh, Raj, Raj sir have been uh, entrepreneurship and IAC's mentors for quite a long time, and we have really got uh, wonderful and everlasting uh, insights from their end and uh, coming to the Bellatrix aerospace and your future, what do you, you aspire to do in the future with this startup? Uh, we want to be, uh, um, uh, I am not naive in telling this, I'm confident. Uh, we want to be the leaders in the global uh, propulsion industry. Uh, so that's what we aim to be. And um, it's all about, you know, uh, I give this example gold is available underneath the ocean right in the ocean bed but why don't you go and mine it it's there in abundance the cost of mining is more than the value of gold so it doesn't make sense so space has always been that area why don't you go and mine on the moon forget asteroids you have all the natural resources for human civilization to transition from uh, you know scavenging earth and uh, depleting the resources on earth and endangering the planet you can as well go and mine there, right? The problem is cost of transportation is huge. That's the only thing which is limiting us to do. So that's where we intend to play a larger role. Now what we intend to do is a lot of satellites going up. You want to mitigate space debris. You have to ensure that satellites deorbit at the end of life. And you have to ensure that um, satellite servicing is done on orbit. So we are doing something called as a space taxi concept. It's our Ola Uber in space, as I would like to call. So uh, where we help in um, uh, carrying, if you are, I mean, uh, say we have 51 participants. If all of you are satellites and all of you want to go to different orbits, right? You all have to book a different rocket right to space, which will be very expensive. Rather, what I'm telling is I have a space taxi and I can accommodate all of you. Let, let us ask Elon Musk to drop us into an orbit or ISRO, for example. In, we all take one rocket ride. So from there, um, uh, with our efficient engines in our, in my space taxi, we will drop you to your own place, wherever you need to go, whichever orbit. Um, just like uh, we take a train ride from uh, Bangalore to Hyderabad, we get down, but all of our houses are at different location. Use Uber pool. If you can't, since you can't afford uh, uh, to hire own, I mean, one taxi space is expensive. So we, we use the pooling concept and that's what we are intend to do with space taxi. It just not delivers, um, customers to different orbits. So we, after delivery, we can also do deorbiting of dead satellites, clearing the space, uh, for more things to come, uh, uh reducing the debris and, um, things like that and uh, increasing the life of the satellite servicing and then finally now that uh, through artemis accords nasa opening the lunar gateway as they call for commercial exploitation be a cargo provider from earth orbit to lunar orbit and back uh, with our uh, engines which run on water so that's where we uh, want to see ourselves uh, going forward That's a we are answer. hiring now. One more point. We are hiring now. People interested to apply also can apply. So this is actually a very good news for most of the students because most of them are actually putting in the chat like, uh, is there an opportunity where we can get uh, internship in Bellatrix Aerospace? I was thinking of taking that up after uh, our series of questions. So definitely and right now uh, since they saw, saw you see, since they heard you saying uh, 
your company is open for hiring and internship, they'll be very happy. But also one more thing to keep in mind is that the competition increases exponentially in more time. Especially when people have heard over here, it's going to circulate in the campus soon. <laughs> so again, for the members who want to uh, enter this space, uh, one of the important things which they also need to know about the current and future of the space, space startup industry. So can you um, throw some light on that so that? Uh, yeah, see, it's an evolving industry. It's something which was, uh, which always existed, but the it was more business to government, B2G kind of a market, right? So it was all government driven. But uh, thanks to uh, certain other policies, privatization is happening. It uh, And it's a big industry. So by end of this decade, it will be a $1 trillion global industry. So imagine even 0.1% of that industry means a lot. Majority being downstream applications to better our life on Earth. Even be it, uh, I mean, Amazon is talking moving the cloud like literally to space because you don't have facilities. And there you have unlimited uh, power in, uh, uh, through sun, right? You can always power your servers. And you have uh, laser communication, which offers you higher bandwidth uh, data transfer, all optical links. So uh, uh, this industry is moving in a rapid pace because it's the only industry where technologies from different fields can be applied to bring a solution. So you need not necessarily uh, be a space. If you do a startup, which you do something, say terrestrial communication using optical links, you can as well apply it to space. So it's a growing industry. And my belief is that presently uh, the software industry is the biggest employer, right? By the end of the century, you will see definitely see a transition. That's what the statistics show you. So people, we, we believe in numbers at the end of the day, not just words. So as per statistics as well, uh, when all menial jobs goes to automation, so you need some jobs where you know use your brain and space is that industry. And end of this decade, the space industry will be the biggest employer. Uh, so uh, it's the right time for us uh, because the competition is there, but it's not that uh, when compared to other e-commerce, say e-commerce startups or um, other startups so competition is less and there is room for innovation and if you uh, and um, you know uh, google is a treasure trove of knowledge uh, you can uh, self uh, do your self research and if you have a unique solution for space um, because you know divided it into upstream downstream be it anything be it software and even be it programming for example uh, if I have a uh, radio satellite uh, to image SAR, synthetic aperture radar, for example, I can't do onboard processing because I had to beam the raw data down, compress it down. So uh, it takes time for me to, uh, I mean, for the downstream people to give a solution to the customer. So if you can come up with new algorithms, which we can do processing on in the satellite. So just a few examples. Industry is booming. So if you have a solution, it's the right thing to enter. And in India, in particular, uh, P, uh, there are a couple of space focused investors now who wants to you know, take risk and give that first check. So the risk appetite has increased. So um, uh, you can do your research and you know, if you have anything, you can always reach out to me. It's all positive. So thanks a lot, sir. And uh, now uh, we are almost coming to the end of the session and uh, a little dose of uh, motivation uh, would be very elegant for the student community who really want to, who are pretty much in the doorstep, whether should we enter inside or whether should we just get carried away with our academia goal. So what do you have to say for them considering all the experience, expertise and shared history of excellence you have had so far? Okay, so see, I, I mean, self motivation is very important. That's what I would say rather than uh, if somebody else motivates you, it is only going to last for two, three days, and then you forget it. So you get into that cycle. So what worked for us in Bellatrix is that uh, self motivation we have taken seriously. So that is needed. First point. Um, uh, what was the next thing you asked?
uh, I just I asked, um, can you just provide few words of motivation for the students who are pretty much at the doorstep? Oh, right, right, right. Uh, see, it's uh, very important. What I normally when people ask me that can I also have plan to do a startup? Can I do it? Uh, people would expect I would say yes, but most of the time I would have said no. But of course, this is person to person specific to that person, because see what happens. It's important for anybody to have that industry experience and the industry exposure. So just like for higher education, we go abroad. Uh, it's not just to get the degree. We go there for getting that exposure, you know, which can't be taught to you. Similarly, at least for a year or say two years, getting an industry exposure will definitely help. Because that's where you practically see what you develop, how it's being adopted or absorbed into uh, uh, real life scenarios. So, um, uh, and uh, also, it is also a great way to network because you're, uh, for any entrepreneur, networking skill and networks are very important um, when you start a venture. So when you are in an industry, uh, it helps your network ne uh, networking as well. You get a lot of contacts. And you also see the uh, globe picture in a different way. And then you can always come back and, uh, you know, step into your entrepreneurial journey. Uh, that's what uh, I would advise. Uh, but if you're confident, uh, if you're somebody who have done all the background research and if you want to take, if you want to jump directly, uh, that is also possible. That was in our case. Uh, we didn't have any prior experience of working anywhere. Um, um, but what we have realized is, uh, certain things we could have done faster uh, if we had that uh, industry experience. So uh, 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 that's what, as I said, self-motivate yourself and uh, you take the call. You can, um, uh, on a very generic term, it is better at least if there is one year to two years of industry experience before you jump onto your entrepreneurial journey. Uh, uh, that's something which I would like to tell. And um, uh, when you want to give a solution, uh, uh, please be confident uh, with it uh, because it is your product and it's your solution. And um, others can't question about that. Um, build a good team. That's very important. Single person cannot do anything. Um, and ensure that when you build a team, they own the goal, they own the vision, right? Uh, if not, it will not work. There should not be any disagreements. There can be debate, but everything, uh, uh, there should not be disagreements, which we have seen. The most common reason for startups to fail globally, 50% is founder disputes, right? Your, uh, you and your partner fight and then you say, oh, check it, you go, uh, 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 I mean, opposite ways. So please don't do that. Choose your uh, partner wisely. Uh, it's just not in love life, but uh, in your entrepreneurial life as well. So it's important for you to um, have uh, good friends and good uh, and build a good team. Uh, take this seriously, and um, all of you should believe in the dream. And there should be perseverance. It will not work out in the timeline which you think it will work out. It is going to take a little bit longer. Be ready for that. Um, I think uh, uh, rest of uh, I mean everything is available online in some TED talks where you can also get good dose of motivation. But uh, coming from me, be realistic is what I would say. And I would like to end with that. So thanks a lot for this insightful uh, talk. And uh, we, are, we have been very happy to have you on our platform. It was planned since uh, days to get you on our platform. But uh, over a period of time, the team just got busy with uh, quite a lot of other activities, including uh, trying to make their way to Amazon Web Service Computation and all these stuff. But uh, definitely people have been very happy to hear uh, uh, whatever you said. And uh, we are getting uh, very good responses both on chat and mail. Uh, we'll take a few questions before we close this session. Yeah, sure. I just saw that open the chat box. There's, there are a good couple of good questions. So one of the question is something which everybody wants to know is uh, they want to know about the inter internship opportunities of Bellatrix Aerospace and how they they should uh, go forward to apply. 
uh yeah because at, at till the, i mean uh, till now we have a policy of no internship zero internship because of um, uh, the area which we work in but this year that is changing so from april uh, we are, we are accepting interns so we have problem statements uh, uh starting from this year so i uh, i think uh, uh, we'll be happy to uh, take interns from this year starting from april So one of them is asking, do you have any astronaut training programs going on? I don't think. Yeah, that's not relevant to us. Maybe ISRO. Yeah. So So at what stage of your development you decided to go for funding? This is one of the question from Abhishek Gupta. Yeah, that's a good question. As I said, um, uh, idea to POC stage. So once we had the, uh, with grants, what we got, be it from JSW or the government grants or even IAC, once you have a proof of concept, that's when we decided to scale the operations up. So, uh, what is the work culture at Bellatrix? How is the work culture at Bellatrix? How much do you expect to input from members who are a part of it? And what do you basically expect out of them? So, we are a very horizontal organization. So, there's no vertical hierarchy. You can uh, see me playing around with uh, everyone. So, um, uh, there, there is, I mean, everybody is kind of equal because um it's the product which you're building is very important so it's important that you follow a very flat organizational structure uh culture i would say is very playful and very childish um which i think we should little bit change but uh, you enjoy and uh, there uh, uh, uh in what you do um there's freedom and um you you get on to work uh, works work on something that nobody in the country is doing um that's something we always and of course we take care of our team members very well and um uh, there are as uh, that's common dogma with the startup is that you have to put 14 to 15 hours a day uh, uh, well we don't have that we have a solid uh, 9 hour uh, uh, work work time if you want to stay it's up to you it's your uh, we follow project management if you want to stay and finish it you can stay so there's no restrictions per se but we will not force you to work 14 15 hours because work-life balance is very important um but uh, you know it's very open if you want to stay and work you can in fact today is sunday holiday uh, there are some people who have come there working it's up to them um, so it's uh, just and uh, just like any other uh, uh, startup, the, with only added uh, taste of space. So was it challenging to get uh, simulation or computational facilities from IASC? This is one of the question. Uh, was it challenging actually because whoever are a part of IASC, it's we pretty much get us straight pass to get access to these areas? No, thanks to SID, uh, they enable it. So it's just like for any other student. So we don't have a lot of challenges there. And uh, coming to uh, one person has raised his hand, Park Diman, you can actually unmute and ask you a question. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, uh, the chat facility was not available for me. Uh, my question was, uh, does Bellatrix have space is it going to accept undergraduates for internships? Yeah, we, we'd be more than happy to, uh, starting from uh, April, you can apply at careers at bellatrixaerospace.com and uh, no, we'll be more than happy to talk to you. Right? Uh, we can't accept 100 to 200 interns, right? So it's uh, uh, it'll be limited, but definitely you can apply and we'd love to talk to you though and uh, understand what you want to do. Thank you, sir. Okay, there's one question. Can you share your balance sheet? <laughs> I guess that's personal. <laughs> that, that, that's not happen. That won't happen with any startups, or at least not in sessions like this. 
no i mean I, i'll be open you can go to the ministry of corporate affairs website and pay 500 rupees and get it for yourself <laughs> so some couple of them have raised their hands uh who are in that we just So Arnav Mishra, you can uh, go ahead and ask your question. Arnav, are you there? Uh, I just saw you raising uh, the hand. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there wasn't problem. Uh, sir, uh, good uh, good evening, sir. Uh, uh, sir am, I, am I audible? Yes, sir. No, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what are some? Uh, I, I, I was asking you what are some specific skill set you would I would recommend us to before applying for internship at Bellatrix. Okay. Uh, so uh, see, unlike any space company, for us uh, having your foundation, the basics strong is what we would uh, look at. So uh, 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 if you are an engineer and if if you are in the mechanical stream, uh, I would say. good foundation on um, um, solid mechanics thermodynamics and fluid whichever is your interest is very important in what we do and that's all we also look forward so our internship i mean our interview questions even if a phd candidate comes it's all into the basics because if your foundation is strong you can solve uh, you'll have the presence of mind to solve uh, any difficult problems which come your way so any uh, interns who want to apply i would just say keep your foundation the basics strong what you learn in your second year of engineering thank you thank you sir so sandeep you can go ahead with yours you don't mind you are for intern uh, sandeep are you there my voice is audible ah uh, yes sir in which domain you are mostly focusing um see we are a space propulsion system company so uh, we focus uh, mainly in propulsion but propulsion comprises of both thermodynamics fluid structures control uh, control engineering uh, you know uh, be it even ai ml for example um, um, in softwares which we are developing so uh, these are a few areas to name um but so have how has your experience been with the investors are they demanding so i'm so that's also a very good question because as a part of as an entrepreneur it's important for you to choose the right investor Uh, who also understands you and who will be part of the journey and who will not simply throw unnecessary demands it is important for an investor that you show them good returns so you need to have good understanding so in this journey uh, don't accept money from the first person itself you should be comfortable with your investors so i am happy to say that we have a good set of investors who go along with you in your journey and we take decisions together so that would be my answer so we have we will since we are running short of time we'll be taking last two questions one from parth and one from bhushan and after that we'll be concluding so parth uh, you can go ahead yes sir uh, am i audible uh, yes parth go ahead yes sir for a first timer getting into startups uh, for a person trying to get into an aerospace startup what kind of skill set would you suggest the person should uh work on before entering the startup area so i would just do a, a suggest uh, like uh, what's your interest and uh, what is the product you want to bring on study about the in the, i mean just do a uh, basic research about um the uh, you know the industry uh, 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 and the where and which category your uh, solution falls into so uh, that would help talking to people would help so before you decide to step on your entrepreneurial journey um, talk to people uh, here at uh, iisc or um, 
I mean, uh, uh, you know, explore, just talk to people and explore and get to know what it is and then decide. So uh, uh, before you, because then you will realize uh, where you have skill and where you actually need to develop certain skills, right? Because there's no straightforward answer. I think I'm an expert in propulsion, for example, and I enter into that area, I know I know nothing. So it's only, then you realize that, oh, there is so much to know and I've taken, I've jumped early. Uh, if I just, you know, uh, took some time to do research, it would have been better. So when you ask skills, I would say first explore, talk to people and, you know, do that inner uh, exploration first. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So coming to the last question, Bhushan, you can go ahead. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm from uh, Aysar Pune and uh, uh, majoring in... Uh, uh, physics. Yeah, uh, actually, I know about the uh, how to use the uh, like uh, thermodynamics, classical mechanics, and uh, solid state physics, etc. in uh, space technology. But I want to know about uh, how we can use the uh, quantum technology in this field. So I might not be the right person to answer that question, but uh, there are, uh, for your information, there is one company in India. Uh, again, uh, they are going to be incubated at IIC. Uh, who are working on using uh, uh, quantum um, uh, quantum uh, technology basically for communication um, uh, for the defense uh, use case. So they are using it in space. In fact, China has uh, uh, already launched the world's first quantum satellite for quantum encryption. Quantum encryption is uh, something which uh, in India also there are other startups working for on the ter terrestrial area, but in space, as far as I know, there's already uh, one startup which wants to take this technology uh, to space. Um, but I think um, uh, uh, you can reach out to them. Uh, I will share the contact with Sudeep and um, they can guide you more on it. Okay, okay, thank you. So thanks a lot. Uh... Um, Rohan and thanks for everyone who asked questions and made this event look very lively and I would like to hand over it to the vice president of events uh, Mayank Mitram to uh, con convey the last note and conclude the talk. Thank you. Yeah. Hi everyone. So yeah. So this was a very nice talk by uh, Mr. Rowan. Thank you for coming and joining us and uh, uh, giving your insights and uh, answering so much of these uh, wonderful questions and giving insight into the startup industry and your Bellatrix uh, Aerospace, which is like uh, pioneering, going to pioneer very soon. And uh, yeah, we'll be uh, having these time uh, kind of talks uh, very often and uh, we would, uh, the audience, we would like your uh, like uh, we would like more of your uh, uh, engagement into this and uh, yeah from NTISC uh, we'll be uh, thank a lot to Mr. Rohan and to all the audience who were there to make this event uh, grow big and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you all uh, it was good talking to you and uh, thank you for your questions thank you Sudeep uh, Mike uh, for organizing this all the very best. Uh, thank you, sir, and thanks everyone for attending. Most importantly, take care, have Bye. a good day, and we would look forward to engage with more such events, both from the audience as well as our extravagant speaker of and our chief guest today. <laughs> so, thanks a lot. Uh, looking for more these more of these engagements for any thing or any communication please write to us at uh, team.entisc at iisc.ac.in. I have also men mentioned it in the chat. So we are very responsive and we'll get back soon for any cause. Thank you. Thank you.